Hi, I'm Micah Khan. I'm a filmmaker collaborating with Movie Maker Magazine on a series on visual storytelling, directing, and whatever goes into movie making. I'm really excited because today I got a chance to talk to Paolo Carnera, who is the cinematographer of Netflix's White Tiger. It was one of my favorite movies to come out this year, and I was super excited to talk to him. And I had to take the chance to talk about his lighting, his lens choices, and his camera movements, all in the service of the this amazing emotional story. So I was super curious about the emotional journey of the camera in this movie. So I hope that comes across and I hope you get something out of it. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe so you can see more. No, there is not a, really a meaning in choosing mm -hmm. colors. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the Gandhi statue, the Dandi March the study, that was, uh, uh, it's the Indian flag, which is, orange, white, and green. So we, we choose these three colors because the original, originally it was litten this statue with those colors. So we just uh, made them a bit stronger, but that, that's, that's uh, the, the, the story of those colors. Then the colorful uh, line that uh, uh, followed the white tiger, it's very interesting in some way because, um, uh, first of all, my way of, of doing it, it's uh, on, during the long scouting, it was my first time in India. I, I stole every time that I do scouting, I, I steal images, taking a lot of pictures with my camera. And uh, these are something that it's memory, something beautiful, that uh, very interesting that I saw, that it's not in the same setting which I will shoot the movie, but I take this and I put inside the movie because I like it, I liked it. And I know it's real, but it's uh, when you put something that you like, that you, you find really powerful all together, everything becomes more powerful. You, you make like, a, uh, you, how do you say, more dense the reality. Uh, everything that it, you find in the white tiger, it's, it's real because I, I saw it, uh, not exactly there, but around the corner. And uh, I just told that one and put inside my frame. The color of the basement, uh, for, for instance, we saw all this color in another ba basement, not in that one in which we shot. So we reproduce also in some way the, the, the place in which the people were ironing because they were ironing. They were doing that for the master living up, upstairs. The color of the different uh, shops. I saw in a poor uh, part of uh, old Delhi, all these colors. In, the, in that part in which we were shooting, all was, white because they were changing all the light from uh, uh, fluorescent light, uh, from tungsten light to LED. So they were becoming all white and boring. So I changed all the light of all the shops, making them like they are in the poorest part of the, of the, of old Delhi. They, they were much more interesting. So that, that was uh, the, 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 the idea of, uh, of uh, the white tiger. It was uh, trying to be as much as possible realistic, but enhancing the reality, making this kind of reality uh, very interesting for the audience. Because uh, then we had three different level of the storyline, which is the past when Baram is uh, young, the youthness of, of, of Baram in the village, which is the, in some way the, the, the second part of his life uh, in, in the town, and uh, the third part after the murder, when he became a, business, a bus businessman. So also these th three level, they were very important. Uh, and the past, uh, and the village, uh, it's a nice place. It has to be it poor, but really nice. And we, we, we had the, 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 the chance of shooting in a, in a beautiful place, in a beautiful village. 
and uh, also with a, a very nice light. Um, the in the countryside, the the air is uh, is is much more crispy and clean, and you can feel it. Then when we went to to Delhi, we start to have uh, through the dry season uh, a very difficult light. It was a uh, incredible milky because of pollution. And the, the pollution was uh, so thick that we had to start to use a face mask uh, just much before COVID, <laughs> many months before COVID. You know, uh, you saw the white tiger. It's, um, it's a mixture be between uh, uh, a funny tragedy and the dark comedy. So it has to be always uh, in some way uh, in, the, in, the, in the part which is funny, real and funny. And when it's a, a tragedy, it has to be uh, dark, but still with some uh, life uh, inside. Because, uh, because uh, at the end, uh, it's a story of, uh, of, a, of a man who arrived to his uh, to to achieve his uh, what he wanted to, to do, um, and um, and he's happy for that. Was there a specific like lens choice you made to separate those timelines? How did you visually separate the timelines and the imagination space that he has? Well, that that was driven mainly with colors and uh, well. Camera movement. Uh, we shot mainly handheld the the village uh, to uh, to feel a bit more rough, and we add in post grain, more grain in uh, in in the village part. Then the the second part, which is uh, the part of uh, of the town of the two towns, uh, Dambad and and Delhi, in which uh, uh, Baram. Uh, uh, start to be to, to become a driver and becomes a, uh, the the driver of his master. We shot mainly uh, using dolly and steadicam, so the camera movement were softer and the white uh, the, uh, and the light was whiter and cleaner. Is there a reason why you chose to shoot those scenes cleaner? Yeah, because um, um, I like the idea that uh, as much. As uh, the movie become dark, as much as you feel that uh, uh, reality, it's uh, it's like Barham is going to discover that is uh, the I mean in the surface is clean, but under the surface it terrible dirty. We have to show audience which is the surface. Thinking that it, Baram, for Baram, it's a, it's a, uh, it's it, it's amazing, it's beautiful, it's uh, it's heaven, uh, but little by little discover which uh, which kind of uh, of hell it is, how terrible it is to be a slave. Do you want to talk about the future and how you? I like I cut you off there. I apologize. Yeah, the future, yeah. the future, <laughs> the present. <laughs> We wanted a, a colorful, really colorful world, first of all. A bit too much colorful. Why too much? Because it's a bit kitsch. Because it's, uh, Baram is an easy man. He tried to be like his master, but it's something different. Thanks God, he's different. And uh, uh, so he always used something that he saw, that he liked in his in the environment in which uh, he feel more, uh, more, more in his uh, close to himself. So uh, the white tiger uh, driver office uh, uh, has something that looks like uh, a shock apartment, but something also that looks like uh, the magazine of, of the of the of the suburb of the, of. Uh, uh, the shop of the of the suburb of Delhi, in which uh, he goes to 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 buy 
uh, alcohol or it goes to buy uh, something that he wants to buy. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, this, it's a world that he knows and he likes. So adding color is something that uh, to his life or, or carrying the color of the, of the basement of Ashok in his uh, uh, own new office is something that make him more at home. Is there a change in the in the focal length in like the lens length as well? Do you shoot more the future on longer longer lenses with more like you know bokeh in the background? No, we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the uh, uh, wide lenses uh, to be closer to uh, Barham. Uh, it's it was uh, a way to to add the feeling of uh, in some way entering his mind to feel what he was thinking. So because you feel a close up with a wide lens is totally different than the close the same close up with a, a, a telefocus lenses. No, you feel also if you don't understand it, uh, exactly why, but you feel if you are an audience that you feel that uh, it, uh, with the telefocus lenses, uh, you are far away from, from the character. With the wide angles, you are really close to him. So we wanted to feel that we were close to Barram. And, uh, and then we use uh, a lot uh, the, of the small zoom movement because Ramin loved it. And because, uh, because he wanted to do something that uh, a lot of movement, we, we studied a, a, a lot of, uh, of uh, Scorsese. I watched it again this morning and the last shot, like where we like, introduced the white tiger car, uh, I literally turned to my girlfriend and goes, it's really good fellas here. <laughs> like, good fellas. That. Well, that's, that's true. Yeah. We, 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 I, I saw many times good, good fellas. And, and Ramin always was talking about, about good fellas and of course, taxi driver, a very high level reference. I mean, uh, we'll, we all love uh, Scorsese movies, he's a master. I've noticed a pattern in the imagination shots that they're mostly on Steadicam and a lot in wider lenses. Is was that a specific choice that you guys made to make it look like more dreamy or I like to hear it in your words. So, what do you mean about the imagination shot? Which part of the movie are you talking about? So, like, exactly? like the shot where he imagines that his family's being killed. Oh, and like, yes. And then yes. there's yes, yeah, yeah. That that was uh, uh wow. Well, that was the nightmare. <laughs> Which is uh, no the nightmare for Barham. I love it. I loved it. Yes, we shot with the, with zoom, but with the wide zoom, and and sometimes also moving. Uh, the 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 uh, with Steadicam, uh, and uh, that was funny because uh, um, my uh, Steadicam operator uh, was moving the camera, and sometimes I was pulling the, the, the zoom. He uh, was going closer, and I was going with the zoom wider. Now, so we making a a, a, a movement, a, a, a contrast movement between. That and um, and I, I had always the zoom in my in my hand with a, a remote control of the zoom. That was to make a bit more dreamy the the the, the and then um, the sequence. Uh, and at the same time, it has to be all all those sequences are very harsh and uh, and uh, uh, because uh, well they they were the. The, the, the nightmare, I mean, uh, because he, he was afraid. The, yeah. last, the last shot of the movie is yeah. like, is a culmination of all those imaginary shots, right? Like where um, he sees things and he's speaking right to the camera at that point, like that la the very last yeah. shot. Yeah. Was, what was the designing of that shot like? We always knew that uh, it was, it has to be a, um, a Steadicam movement through the, uh, through the the white tiger office because we wanted uh, uh, to see Barham uh, for the last time Barham um, in contact with with all his uh, drivers and um, there was something 
uh, without any music, that it was close to a musical in the choreography of this movement. And uh, also the position of all the drivers all around, around Barham make this uh, some kind of remind me uh, in a way uh, a, a, a part of the musical. It's, uh, so that, that was uh, mainly, and then it, it has to be um, really the, the, the end of the, of the dark comedy. So being red, being colorful, it's in some way, not really intentionally because, uh, uh, but it was, uh, it, it happens that it has to be at the same time, uh, pretty, in some way funny, and uh, but in some way also it's a, it's a night sequence. So also as always something dark inside. So it's a mixture, a mixture uh, like, like like the the movie. It's it's a mixture of every kind of different uh, movie. Because yeah. the movie is a comedy, sometimes it's also it's a it's a dark movie. It's a, it's a bright movie. It's a, it's a harsh movie. Is there any scene in the movie that you are particularly proud of, like that you when you see it, it's like yeah, that's the this this is amazing, <laughs> and I wanna I wanna hear like what your what your thought was when you were filming those that scene. I like uh, mainly. Almost all the uh, the sequence that I sh that we shot in the uh, in the basement of the of the Ashok apartment, and uh, I love the driving sequence uh, through the rain uh, to the murder place because it's something that happens. Sometimes it happens, uh, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but rain a refraction of the rain and the light in the background make something uh, dreamy in the image, which is pretty. And that it's at the same time, it's not too pretty because it's harsh too. And uh, emotionally it's uh, seeing uh, uh, Barham through the rain, seeing a shock in the rear mirror, uh, uh, with the rain on the uh, front windshield, uh, so everything there was is 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 really nice. It's uh, so it's uh, and I love the, the the sequence of the murder uh, through the rain. I because rain make it's difficult because rain means that you are walking on the on the mud uh, that you, that you are pouring water because you are under the rain, because physically you shoot with camera under the rain. We were under the rain, but it's, um, uh, it, as much as you feel that uh, physically, that uh, it's, it's hard, uh, as, as, as much it's easier to tell the audience, which is the feeling of the characters during the sequence. What kind of advice would you give uh, starting filmmakers, no budget filmmakers on cinematography or lighting? First of all, uh, this is a, an amazing job, a fantastic job. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if you are doing a, a, a really low budget movie or a high budget movie. Uh, you have to try to do it uh, like uh, uh, it's the most important movie of your life, always. And um, when I started uh, some years ago, many years ago, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I always, uh, very, very soon I understood that the audience, uh, the audience go to, to a movie theater to see now on, on, a, on a computer, see my movie, uh, and they, they don't know which is the budget of my movie. They compare my movie, uh, which, uh, which is a really low budget with the huge budget movie of uh, uh, 
that shot another cinematographer. So uh, it doesn't matter what my, which is the money that you can have for doing the movie. You have to be always at the top, always at the top, because you could, and you, you can do at the top also with a really low budget movie, because uh, what is really important is your creativity. That's ideas. That's the first thing. Without that, you don't do nothing. No, you cannot be a, a great cinematographer. And uh, my, I mean, always uh, in, in my experience, which was the, the most important thing uh, to be first a photographer. Still, I am a photographer. Still, before starting the, the, a movie, I need to find not just the way of, uh, of shooting the movie, to take picture, to make picture that remind me the atmosphere of the movie that I want to do. So making a lot of pictures uh, help you to find a way of doing the movie. It's, uh, it's, it's the same way of telling. You know, my teacher, I had a, a, in, a, in a film school in, in Rome, I had the chance to have the, a great teacher, which was, was Carlo Di Palma, the uh, cinematographer by, of uh, Michelangelo Antonioni and then Woody Allen for many, many. And uh, he always used to tell, um, we, had to know everything about uh, uh, techniques, technical uh, stuff, but we are not techniques. We are not uh, uh, technic people. We don't. Uh, we we are creative people. I know it's going to sound weird, but that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> 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 That's such a great way of putting it. It's like you have to know the techniques. But at the end of the day, it's the emotion, right? It's what you feel on screen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Paolo. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, that was awesome. Thank you so much. I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.